So to continue on answering questions which have been sent to me recently, um, I've got a few to go through and the latest one is in response to a video that I did on my astrological channel. And I'll, I'll put a link to that video um, down below in the information section here. But the video was on uh, listen to your heart, not astrology. Listen to your heart, not astrology. And the question that came out of that was, well, what if your heart misguides you? And the person gives um, an example, says, for instance, having an infatuation on a woman who, who you'll never be close with. So the idea is, what if your heart misguides you? When I just gave a, a talk, a lecture a few months back on um, listening to your heart and learning to follow your heart. And I highly recommend going back and watching that video to make sense of this question. Well, we have to be cautious about what we mean when we say our heart, because we have to remember that if we could truly listen to our heart, would probably never actually be misguided. So what's the problem there? The problem is that we don't know what our heart is. And this occurs because as human beings, we are born into a family with people who have prejudices, ideas, concepts, notions, a way that they see the world. Different families have different cultures in this way. Different cultures throughout the world can see things radically different. So a person can say that they are listening to their heart when really most of the time what they are actually listening to is the indoctrination, the concepts, the notions, the prejudices of how they were raised. Okay, that's one level of it. So a person can say, well, I love this individual but their culture or their tradition says, well, you can't marry or love that person because they're of a different caste, they're of a different religion, they're of a different um, I ideology, whatever it might be. And so then you say, oh, well, my heart is telling me I can't love this person. That's more broad, and most of us these days hopefully are not so bound by those kinds of uh, misunderstandings. But there's a, a deeper aspect of confusion aside from cultural difficulties, and that is all the neurotic little ideas you have in your head, the kinds of projections that you have. Um, you know, for example, if when you were a child you experienced a deep betrayal, and now that influences how you see people, how you relate to people. If as a child you were not, were not nurtured or loved in a healthy fashion, that can potentially attract you to people that are also not healthy for you because your nervous system, your consciousness, the chemicals within you are conditioned. They are used to feeling a certain way, which is let down, hurt. And this is why in astrology, believe it or not, um, we often look at the moon to see what is a person's consciousness conditioned to experience. When we see a lot of cruel influences to the moon, we know that this is going to be a person that if they're in a relationship and everything is going smoothly and perfectly, they're going to think it's boring. They're going to think, well, there's just something not right here. There's not enough passion. There's not enough zeal. And then they self-sabotage because they're used to things feeling wrong. They're used to being aggression, frustration, betrayal. If you get someone who has a, a moon, the sense of self influenced by um, gentler influences, kinder influences, then those are the kind of people that are just fine being in a very calm, even complacent relationship um, because they're just comfortable. They're just innately comfortable, which can seem boring to other people. I, I hope you're understanding what I'm getting at here. So we can take this a step further, even when it comes to things like food or entertainment you know one person can say well i know this is good for me because my body craves it well it may be that this person is just raised on french fries and chocolate <laughs> or beer or whatever it might be and so they have this sense that they crave that thing so when it comes to infatuation of any kind with people or places or things we have to remember that there is a there is a unconscious component to it all. And there's a chemical component to it all. This is what we always forget. We act as though we have all this control that we do, but our bodies are actually conditioned to feel a certain way. If you are a depressed person, you have a chemical state that supports that. 
meaning you will not make choices that will deviate from that chemical state. Just like when you know a person who's depressed, you say, well, get up out of bed. Let's go, uh, let's go enjoy some music at the, the park or whatever it might be. And they'll make choices that won't allow them to get up out of bed and go do that because that would change their chemical state. So the idea of the question, what if your heart misguides you? I don't think your heart ever misguides you. And the heart that I'm talking about is the clear, radiant aspect of yourself, which is in tune with what we might consider to be goodness and wholeness and purity. The problem is, is that we have all these layers of chemical states, of neurological patterns, of cultural influences, of belief systems that think we cannot be a certain way because otherwise who will we be? We'll lose our sense of self if we change who we are. So when it comes to listening to your heart, you have to learn to listen to your heart. And it takes, from my experience, a long time because you have to learn to ferret out and weed out and realize, oh wait, this little preference is not really me. This little sense of anxiety is not really me. This came from when I experienced this difficult situation when I was nine years old. This I'm getting from my mom's fears of whatever it might be. So you see, the, even the, the, the method of spirituality is, is to separate you from these things, to give you distance and detachment so that you can't actually hear your heart. That's why faith is often a misunderstood because a person puts their faith in something, but it's not what is actually guiding them on that internal clear, brilliant level beyond all these conditionings, what they are mistaken for faith is all the influences that are coming in, as we've just described. Um, so your heart will supposedly continue to misguide you if you're not understanding what it is that your heart how to hear your heart. So one of the things we have to do is learn how to hear your heart. And this is why meditation is so important, but this is also why so many people avoid meditation and spiritual practice, because when you start to listen to your heart, oftentimes you become overly challenged because it's going to guide you away from things which keep you locked in that state of suffering that you are in. But you are so bound to identifying that that is who you are, that is what you are about, that you can't let go of it. In order to hear your heart, you essentially have to radically change how you perceive the world. And that can mean you have to let go of your friends that uh, want you to act a certain way. You have to quit listening to your parents that want you to um, fulfill all the obligations that their tradition and culture has passed on to them. You have to learn to really get into your mind and find out what are all those crazy thoughts which are making you make these silly mistakes over and over and over again. And this is scary because in order to do that, you have to pull away. You have to go within. You have to let go of attachment and identification with all that you think you are. Notice the key that I used there was all that you think you are so that you can ask, what is the situation? Because if, if you're having an infatuation with a woman or any one man, woman, that you'll never be close with. Why would you do that? You're, you, you know from that sentence, that description, that it'll never happen. So are you really following your heart? You know you're not. You already know you're not. The kind of knowing that your heart gives is without question, is without confusion but the way it leads you is step-by-step step incrementally. So it may be that your heart says, well, what you need to do here is make this choice. And you still don't quite understand exactly all the implications of what that choice is going to have, but you have to make that choice first. And then you move into a new state. And then you listen to your heart again, and you're trying to move, in, you have an intention, you want to move in a certain direction. And then the next step says, you have to completely forget about this girl that you think you're infatuated with. You have to completely forget about this insane need to succeed in this particular area of life. You have to let it go. And if you don't do that, your heart's going to quit talking to you in a sense, metaphorically, because you're not listening. And that, that you have to learn to take those leaps of faith step by step, because the things that seem so painful that you have to let go of, that you have to change, that's part of the process of learning to listen to your heart. And eventually, you become so enamored with your heart that you don't question it ever again. You, you know that you may not understand with the next three steps why you have to take them, but it's guided you so well up to this point that you take them. And again, you find that you've been guided. So this has been something I've thought about a lot. And 
I really truly think I need to do a, a course or a class on this very topic. Although I think I might um, focus it on learning how to pray because prayer and heart, prayer and the heart, those are two things that are intimately related. And if you can learn to hear your heart, if you can learn to pray, you support synergistically both of those things, listening to your heart and being able to pray effectively. So maybe this fall, I'll try to do a stay-at-home retreat on this regard. Um, I think it'll be very helpful. But this is the answer to the question about learning to listen to your heart. The idea is that you're probably not listening to your heart if you keep continuing to have lots of problems. The problem is when you start to listen to your heart, you're going to feel really uncomfortable for a long time <laughs> because it's going to be radically different than what you've been doing. And that makes perfect sense because you cannot continue in the current you cannot continue in your current state and have a different experience, right? So learn to listen to your heart. You have to learn to ask, to pray. What does my heart clearly, how can I learn to listen to my heart? What is my heart? That's probably a better question. And then you have to learn to continue to follow that contemplative theme, that contemplative process until it becomes real for you, until it becomes unquestionable for you, as alive as you've ever felt in your entire life. That's the way it feels. So keep this in mind, and this is the best response I have to, what if your heart misguides you? I don't think it will. And this guidance comes from paying attention to the wrong sources. 